Today we're going to look at Newton's second law to determine the forces on a box on an inclined plane sliding down that ramp with no applied force but with friction. So let's take a look. First we're going to review also some geometry. So if I draw a ramp and I don't write a complete triangle, I do it in a form that I saw Dr. Lewis of MIT do. So, and apply a coordinate plane onto it. So we're going to put a vertical y-axis, and we're going to put a horizontal x-axis. Notice that we have two parallel lines bisected by the ramp. That means the angle below the ramp is equal to the angle above the ramp, theta. Well, that's going to be an interesting property because if we were to twist the x-axis, align the x-axis to the ramp, so let me redraw that so that you can see what I mean. So I'm going to take my ramp, theta, and now I'm going to put my y-axis coming straight out of the ramp. And now I line up my x-axis with the ramp. It's parallel to the ramp. The y-axis is perpendicular. Well, this will allow us to write some component and actual vectors and use this geometry to determine important forces. So knowing that gravity is straight down, Fg, which is equal to Mg, and if you've forgotten, G equals 9.80 meters per second squared. Well, notice that Fg is now the hypotenuse of a triangle where theta, notice that theta, and now between the negative x-axis, the y, excuse me, negative y-axis, and the, hypo, uh, the, the FG becomes now the hypotenuse. We can actually transpose an x component um, downward, and we now have a right triangle. That becomes an important um, knowledge or tool for later. So let's move that aside so that you can use it later. So I'm going to move this aside for your need. It looks like it didn't take, so let's do that again. Okay, I'm going to make that small. Move it over to the side here so that it becomes useful to you if you need it. Okay, and let's redraw our ramp and start the lesson. Okay, so we have a ramp with theta, so let's make theta 25 degrees. Let's put a box that's on this ramp, and it's going to slide down the ramp, and the ramp's going to have a coefficient of friction for the box and ramp of 0.025. Um, let's make the box 5.0 kilograms. Okay, and let's draw our vector forces. So coming from the box ramp, we have the normal force. The box is neither falling through the ramp, but it's not falling through the ramp due to the gravity pulling straight down. So we're going to have Fg. We're going to have friction going back. Okay. And now we have some component vectors. We do have a component vector going downward, which is Fgy. I like to call it that. And Fgy is equal to Fg perpendicular that some teachers like to use, but that, since theta is between Fgy and Fg, that's the adjacent, this is going to be Mg cosine theta. That is what that component vector equals. Well, if we transpose another component vector of gravity, it will be Fgx, because it is parallel to the ramp, so I call it FGX, or some teachers like to call it FG parallel. That's going to be MG sine theta. It's the opposite leg. Look at the if you look at the drawing, theta is away from the opposite leg, so it's going to be sine theta. It seems counterintuitive. Well, now let's go into our math and start doing some physics. First, I tell my students to tackle the component vectors in the y direction. In other words, Fn minus 
F G Y is equal to a net force of zero. So our total forces in the y direction is zero. In other words, the box is not going through the ramp nor flying off the ramp. Well, this becomes a nice little feature because Fn equals Fgy, which is equal to mg cosine theta. You might go, oh, what's so important? Well, here's what's important. You need to memorize that the force of friction is equal to mu times F normal. Okay, the force normal. That's going to be important later. Now let's set up our x or our net force in the x direction. So let's do that. So our net force in the x direction is going to be equal to the negative force of friction. But there's no applied force but plus Fgx, the component of gravitational for, um, acceleration. And that does equal ma. In other words, this box system is sliding down a, with a force of m times a, the acceleration. Well, we can use this property. So a now equals minus the force of friction plus fgx over m. Well, let's put our components in. So minus mu times Fn, which is mg cosine theta plus, so Fgx, mg sine theta over m. Whoa, check this out. If you factor out the m above, mass cancels from this system. So A equals mu g cosine theta plus g sine theta. Let's solve for this. I'm going to factor out the 9.8. So 9.8 meters per second squared. That's g times 0 0.025. That was the coefficient of friction. Cosine 25 degrees plus sine 25 degrees, that's going to equal 3.9 meters per second squared. So the box is going to be accelerating at 3.9 meters per second squared. Hey, did you notice an interesting feature? Check this out. What if velocity was constant for this box going down the ramp? Well, let's take a, the equation for a, so make a equal to zero because velocity is constant. Notice that mu can be determined from the angle um, for a, a box that's either kinetic or static. Check the, uh, here, let me show you what I mean. Got g sine theta. Well, let's solve for mu. You'll notice that mu is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta. Well, as the box, if, the, if the, the ramp could be tilted, as it starts tilting, tilting just before the box starts moving, you can determine the static friction. If the box, just as, as the box, you know, you start tilting that ramp, and as the box just, just begins to move, you can determine the kinetic friction. So in other words, you can use this equation below, mu sine theta or tan theta. You can use that to determine the coefficient of friction for a box sliding down a ramp. Enjoy doing physics. Keep studying, reading about physics. And until next time for part three. Thank you.